Hey Kindergarten, this is Music with Joe Read Aloud. So I'm going to read a story about the same author who wrote Never Play Music Right Next to a Zoo. This story though is about a kid who is very talented but has a little trouble deciding what he might like to play. And it's called The Remarkable Farkle McBride. The Remarkable Farkle McBride. Oh, pity the prodigy, Farkle McBride. No matter what instrument poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or bowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing superb violin. He went readily e deedly e deedly e d with all of the strings at his side. Readily e deedly e deedly e d the remarkable Farkle McBride. But when he was four, Farkle played it no more, in spite of his parents' beseeching. He shattered the records he used to adore. He smashed up his rods and ripped up every score. He threw fiddle and bow to the living room floor as he shouted, Enough of your screeching. When Farkle was five, his melodical gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift, and he rapidly mastered the flute. He went rudely e tootly e tootly e too, with all of the winds at his side. Rudely e tootly e tootly e too, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But at six, Farkle flung his flute into the lake, notwithstanding its lyrical trill. He stamped on the dock till you think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed. I have had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy and whiny and shrill. When Farkle was seven, a different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around, and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He went vroom putty, doom putty, doom putty, doom, with all of the brass at his side. Vroom putty, doom putty, doom putty, doom. The remarkable Farkle McBride. But at eight, he declared to his parents' despair, and as everyone else might have guessed. I can't stand the trombone with his blat and his blare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear, so return it or throw it away. I don't care. I despise it just like all the rest. When Farkle was nine, both his father and mum were bursting with pride and affection, for Farkle learned xylophone, cymbals, and drum in the entire percussion section. He went... Boom! Bash! clang a -ma, clash All the clamor that he could provide. tinkly e bing bong bumpity crash The remarkable Farkle McBride. But soon he fell prey to his usual gloom, despite all the praise and the flattery. First a sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume, then an ear-splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it! He bellowed, the crash and the boom and the clang and the bang of the battery. Ugh! Poor Farkle, at ten, however so renowned, reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sound. Bing! Musicians all playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught a cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace him. Young Farkle was told, your cooperation is vital. So he took the baton and he gave the downbeat and kaboom! The foundations were shaken by glorious music, bombastic and sweet, that filled up the hall and spilled into the street. Music that brought the whole crowd to his feet from all the instruments he had forsaken. They went readily e, rudely e, vroom, pretty, bang. Bravo! All the spectators cried. Deedly e, doodly e, doom putty, clang, the remarkable Farkle McBride. Since that sparkling night, 
Maestro Farco McBride conducts all the instruments he ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass, drums, winds, and strings, and remarkable Farkles at last satisfied.